that are happening in their communities that commercial radio would not even be able to get until you know someone actually sends them that yeah. information. But, so what has been the intervention over the years to ensure that this very important medium is still running? Very little. And I, and I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, people look at community radio and they think, you know, ah, it's, you know, this little people that are aspirational, wanting to, to start something and everybody want, wanting to be famous. That's not true. Ask all, mo most of the mainstream broadcasters that exist today, be it TV, be it radio, where do their staff come from? They come from community radio. Community radio has proven to be at the forefront of uh, breaking stories as you've highlighted. But most of the type of challenges that we've been having is to convince government to, for instance, make good on the commitment that they've already made. So we're not, we're not you know, trying to get them to commit to a 30% ad spend. They've already made that commitment. We're telling them now, put it into policy to ensure that governmental departments spend that 30% with community radio. Let me give an example, right? Government is advertising in a Sunday mainstream newspaper that a lot of poor people in our communities cannot afford to buy. They are promising, they are advertising what? A, a, a job that, you know, is going to potentially fix potholes and things like that. Why do you go to such a mainstream newspaper to advertise a job like that? It would do you better and you can identify and target communities directly by advertising through community media. And, and in part, it's work with institutions like GCIS. They've done brilliant work, but again, GCIS uh, you know, have their hands tied because they're dependent on the policy directive sure. that must come from the politicians. I'm, I'm interested in finding out, does the law allow for private investment when it comes to community radios? No, so what at this stage what we're sitting with is that, and part of the new regulations that ICASA have formulated, is that you can't have private entities, you know, running community radio stations. Community participation, community ownership is absolutely key. So we agree with ICASA, you know, HMs need to be held. Corporate governance is absolutely key. Um, you know, accountability and levels of accountability should exist. For instance, part of the new regulations dictate that you must have two community uh, meetings each year to just discuss programming and then you must still have your annual general meeting and while we feel that it's a bit cumbersome you know to organize that sort of meeting we've agreed that this is these are the levels of accountability that we need to adhere to so so no private part uh, private ownership is is never ideal because if you have an individual coming to dictate what your programming should be who should be the presenter so we're not even interested in that conversation you asked earlier what has government done in part we welcome, for instance, what GCIS has committed to. We think they can do more, but their hands are tied. Government has committed, for instance, recently the minister in the presidency, Jackson Mutembu, held the Community Media Engagement Summit in Cape Town. We made good headway in finding common ground, but deadlines have already been missed mm -hmm. for minutes to be sent, for uh, the directives of updates of what, how we're going to implement. So all we're telling government is, We've made headway in the policy discussion. Sure. Now you, all you have to do is implement and protect the sector. Tashrik, we are running out of time, but I just want to get a way forward from you. I mean, I do understand that the forum had planned a march or a protest action. That was called off in hopes of a negotiation process. Mm -hmm. The minister has not showed up. She's not stuck to her word. What happens now? We're actually trying to calm our members. They are agitating for a demonstration. It was part of our strategy at first that if we did not get a meeting with government uh, and with the ministers, that we would, you know, be packing taxes from all our communities. We know how to mobilize. You know, we, we do it very well every single day. That people are going to come to Witch Hazel Avenue, they're out at the Kazan State offices, and we're going to demonstrate. That is the, the, the directive that we receive from our members. So we're telling our members, let's follow and keep to the commitment that we've now made, and that is to engage government. We've demonstrated that on two occasions now, and we're very far from actually meeting each other. So as it stands, the sector is ready to mobilize, but we out of, out of respect for the process, mm -hmm. we've committed to these negotiations. All we're asking Minister Stelander Beni, Minister Jackson in Temple, is to no longer treat the sector with contempt and ensure not that we keep radio stations open, but that we protect existing jobs, that bread is going to be on the table tomorrow for some of those people that have lost their jobs, and essentially that community voices are protected. That's, that's our call, basically. All right. Well, that's where we'll leave this conversation.